Hi, uh, this is Mr. G, and the last lesson in the installment for the Art of the Cantus, Lesson 2E. We're going to add the third voice, and we're going to tweak it and and uh, start playing with it a little bit. you got to understand, this. what you're going to hear isn't going to be the finished product, by any sense of the imagination, but it does demonstrate my process, what I go through, the steps I usually take. Um, and I did it relatively quickly. One, to show you that it can be done relatively quickly. But two, I just don't have enough video time to, to take you through my journey of maybe working on a piece for three or four weeks, uh, like I'm doing right now with a couple projects I'm working on. But the process is the same. You start off with a fixed cantus firma and a fixed counterpoint. And it, after that's completed, I stop thinking in terms of Renaissance, Baroque era, because that's the, the canis and the, and the counterpoint. That's really a late medieval, medieval Renaissance-ish type format. Once those are laid out, I let my ear take me where it wants to take me. And every piece is different, and every piece... Every piece takes me in a different direction, uh, and that's what I so much enjoy about composing, that every piece I write, I don't know what it's going to be like when I'm done, and I'm excited. It's a, it's a journey. The journey is almost more important than the finished product. I always learn something new. I'm not a great composer in the sense that I've been doing this for years. I've only been doing it for a couple years, but I have a lot of experience under my belt as a musician, as a playing and performing musician, and uh, that comes into play. And so when I start, after I get past the canis counterpoint part, I let my heart and my ear take me where it's going to take me. What you're going to hear isn't a finished polished product. There would be a lot more work to be done on it. I would probably spend a lot of time analyzing it and maybe tweaking it and changing other things up. Uh, there's, I haven't mentioned the dynamics. I haven't mentioned uh, cadences, um, all the quirky, twerky little things that make a piece of music really, really good. So anyway, sit back. Enjoy this last lesson, and I hope you walk away with something that you can use. All right, Mr. G out. All right, now we are going to add the second violin part. I start off by looking at the implied chords by the outer two voices, in this case the violin and the viola. Uh, the first note of every group of four was what our cantus and our counterpoint was. So I'm looking at the first beat of every group of four beats, and figuring out what that note is in the viola and the violin, and that's going to imply a chord. That implies a chord, then I'm going to fill in the remaining voice of that chord. There's going to be a root and third and a fifth. For instance, the very first one, C, E, G. This is an A, right? And this is, actually, it should have been a G. Bring this down here. There's a G. And a C, so that means this guy needs to be an E because that's a voice that's missing. Next group of four, we have a G and a B. That's implying a G chord. The voice, the part that's missing is a D, third note of that triad. The next group of four beats, we have a B note here in the viola and a D, and that's a G again. So we put it, but the note that's missing now is a G, so we put the G there. And the next group of four, we have a C, viola, E there, and that's missing a G, so we just tied it over. Next group of four, we have an A and an F in the outer voices, which means it's implying an F chord. So let's go ahead and make this a C. It could be a D minor chord, but I'm choosing no. I'm just going to cho choose an F there which means the missing voice is a C, so we do that. Next four beats, we have a C and an A. Ah, oh, that's an A minor chord, C and an A. Missing note is an E, fill it in there. Then we have here a C and a B, a B there, rather, in the viola, with a G there. Missing, It's a G chord implied, so that means this note's going to be a D. And then we have, on this next to the last four beats, we have a D and a B, which means it's a G chord. 
fill in the notes that's missing, G. And the last note, we have a C here and a C here. I'm going to put in the third of that chord. So here's what we got so far with just this without M doing anything else. Now I'm going to do one thing here. This inner voice, notice how the outer voices are dealing with quarter notes and half notes. Everything's happening pretty symmetrical. I am pretty much going to mess with the inner voice by using dotted half notes and quarter notes. And watch what happens here. It's it's going to give us a little bit of a make that a dotted half note, excuse me. There. And notice how I'm just doing a stepping up, skipping down. And again, I'm going to do a dotted half note here on this note. And make this guy, see, take a look at it here. On this beat, I have a, a G and a C. So I'll make this an E. Right? And I might even decide, since I might make split that into eighth notes to bridge the gap there. You'll see why in a second. All right. Um, here, we got down to here. So let's do, since there's no big motion happening there, let's put quarter notes in here. You notice when one part moves, the other one stays the same. So what if I just did, and I'll just, it's a good walk down. All right. Cool. All right, we've got, now, again, whole note against two half notes, I'm going to do the dotted half and the quarter. All right, and connect it just like that. Do the dotted half, do there, dotted half and quarter here. Let's see here. And basically I'm just gonna be doing the same kind of figure. And then here, dotted half, down there. Now, I didn't pay a whole bunch of attention harmonically to what's happening, but watch what happens now with these three voices. Each one is going to be doing something a little different. Alright, now, notice that something's happening here. We have a C and a D. All of a sudden, this right here sounds a little hinky. Let's listen. Ah, there it is. That's an E going against that F. So one of these has to change. I don't want to put, I want this, this is a G7. Let's see if they're right, C, D, E. We want this last chord, since this is ending on a C, we want the last chord to be a five chord, a G7. So I'm going to have to change something. There's an F. There's my B. This really needs to be a G. And C, E, D, that would be there, right? And what if we just did... That gives us our D to C here to go against the B to C there. But now that gives us D. Okay, let's see what happens now.
pretty pleased. Let's get back up to here. All right, now, one last little thing here. This part, two whole notes, two half notes. Let's make one of these half whole notes of the dotted half quarter figure because it'll set against the rest. And this time I'm going to put it in a viola voice because I've been doing that in the violin voice. So let's do that and we'll make it, yes, right there. Now listen to this. Now, I am actually, this is a good place to stop on this. If I were developing this further, there would be more things I would do, but you see the basic concept of what I've been doing here. I start off with the cantus and the counterpoint, first species counterpoint, whole notes. Then I connect the skips with linear movement as much as possible, and then I... Uh, that's what we call tweaking it. And then I added the third part by starting off with just whole notes and filling in the implied chord for every four beats. And then I tweaked that part to add a little bit of different motion. Notice how the outer two voices are pretty linear. They're half notes, whole notes, and quarter notes. So I made this guy dotted half quarter followed with a few with the oddball eighth notes put in there. And... Uh, it sounded pretty good. Let's listen to it one more time. I might want to try something here. I'm hearing, I'm hearing this. So I'm going to do this. And make that a whole note. Which splits things up a little bit more. So now let's listen to this. All right. And I might want to do one more little thing. Um, make this a dotted half. And then I'm going to make this guy 16th. And you'll see why in a second. Just a little, add a little spice to it. Um, All right, here we go. We start off with whole notes, and this is what we end up with. This is a this is a fun little thing to do. All right, I hope you enjoyed these lessons. Um, I'm. Just, I'm not going to do the second one. I've actually run out of time uh, tonight. But this should be enough to give you an idea of how I get started on and how I write some of the classical stuff. It's not after any particular style. To be honest, I start off with medieval early renaissance cantus and counterpoint. But it quick, I quickly move off into another direction after that. And there's a couple reasons for it. One... Um, I'd like to be really snotty and say, well, Renaissance and Medieval has already been done. I don't want to redo what, what's already been done. That's snotty. The truth is, beautiful music was written back then, and we should study it more because there's some beautiful principles that will help us write gorgeous music. I start off with that because that really, the counterpoint and the uh, countess, because it really works. It really stinking works. But once I lay out the basic bare bones, I don't go chasing after Renaissance or Medieval or Baroque's time period. I write what my heart and my ears hear. And sometimes it turns out better than others, but that's the creative process. 
Um, I will say when I'm listening to a lot of Renaissance or like Palestrina or Baroque, Bach, etc., I will say that my stuff tends to come out sounding a little bit more like it, but I'm not tied to any one genre. And again, it's not arrogance on my part. Part of it is because it's lack of knowledge. I don't know everything I feel I need to know to write great Renaissance era style music. But I'm still letting it impact me and affect my writing. All right? Uh, there's a lot more I could tell you, but look at this. This is like already a 14-minute video. I got to go. Mr. G out. Bye-bye.